ब्रीड्स एंड हाइब्रिड्स ऑफ सिल्क वर्म सिल्क वर्म ब्रीड्स एंड हाइब्रिड्स प्ले ए प्रोमिनेंट रोल इन डिसाइडिंग सिल्क आउटपुट एंड क्वालिटी द गोल ऑफ सिल्क वर्म ब्रीडिंग इज टू अटेन मैक्सिमम प्रोडक्टिविटी इन ईल्ड एंड क्वालिटी विच इज अचीव्ड बाय ब्रिंगिंग जेनेटिक इंप्रूवमेंट through combination of desired genes by crossing two selected pure stocks of silk worm followed by selection silk worm breeding was initiated only in 1920s till 1950s polyvoltaine culture prevailed and indigenous polyvoltaine breeds like pure mysore and c niche in south india nistari in west bengal sarupat and moria in northeastern region were rare however though these breeds were very well adapted and popular in respective regions the productivity and quality of silk was strikingly low polyvoltaine hybrids for irrigated and rain fed zones irrigated zone bl67 a new polyvoltaine breed with better productivity and quality traits than pure mysore was developed the new breed was crossed with bivoltaine and the new polyvoltaine into bivoltaine hybrid kaveri bl67 into csr19 possesses better productivity traits high silk recovery with 6.5 to 7.0 rendita and a grade silk productive bivoltaine hybrids by and large the farmers of southern tropical india had reservations about the bivoltaine rearing and because of this the acceptance of bivoltaine hybrids on large scale has remained restricted adding to it the yield potential of earlier bivoltaine silk worm breed and hybrids was low with poor cocoon characteristics like higher rendita and low neatness five hybrids namely CSR2 into CSR4 CSR2 into CSR5 CSR3 into CSR6 CSR12 into CSR6 and CSR16 into CSR17 were identified as highly productive hybrids During the 1997-1999 these hybrids were authorized by Central Silk Board for commercial exploitation One of these hybrids CSR2 into CSR4 has been a big success with farmers of South India. The hybrid realized 60 to 80 kg per 100 dfls and is quite encouraging. The most striking feature of the hybrid is the realization of international grade silk 2A to 4A. Let us know about them in detail. If farmers rear chalky worms in healthy environment by providing quality leaves the worms would grow robust disease free and yield higher In the sericulturally advanced countries the farmers are supplied with chalky worms reared in chalky centers This technique is not so popular in our country However realizing the advantages of the supplying chalky worms to the farmers both central and state governments have established commercial chalky rearing centers for the benefit of the farmers design of chalky rearing house silkworm rearers should have a separate rearing house for chalky rearing a scientifically designed chalky rearing house is like a temple to the sericulturists To chalky rear about 5,000 dfls, a rearing house of 32 feet by 30 feet dimension is required. The walls of the rearing house should be nicely plastered with cement. Floor also should be cemented and smooth. These are fixed with wire mesh to avoid entry of oozy flies. The plates containing oozy side is placed near the windows in this manner. With the provision of a separate anteroom to the chalky rearing house, chalky worms can be protected from the oozy menace. Before entering chalky rearing house, 
washing of hands is a must besides using separate footwear for the day to day supply of leaves for the chaki worms an exclusive chaki garden should be maintained appliances of chaki rearing house before commencing chaki rearing all the appliances should be kept ready tall stands to keep plastic rearing trays plastic trays stands for feeding paraffin paper or polythene sheets to maintain moisture feathers for brushing chopsticks to avoid hand contamination nylon nets to clean the bed ant wells to keep the stands weighing machines to weigh the leaf quantity plastic winnowers plastic bins to collect leaf plastic frames to incubate loose eggs lime basins and thermometer and more importantly there should be a separate dim lighted chamber to preserve mulberry leaf hygiene and cleanliness clean water should be stored in cement tanks of 6 feet length into 4 feet breadth into 3 feet depth having 2000 liter capacity for first stage cleaning 2% bleaching powder solution is prepared and thoroughly mixed with the water in the tank all the plastic appliances are dipped in this tank and left as it is for 15 minutes then these are washed and dried under the sun now all these appliances are infection free similarly polythene sheets used during rearing are also cleaned and disinfected another important step that rearers must follow is the compulsory disinfection of the rearing appliances and rearing house after every crop using flame gun and disinfectants final disinfection first of all 97.5 liters fresh water is stored in such drums then 250 grams of activator crystals are poured into a bucket then 2.5 liter of sanitec chlorine dioxide is added to it and thoroughly mixed then 500 g slaked lime is mixed well in the water both these solutions are poured into the drum which is already containing water same quantity of solutions are again prepared and mix in the other drum now the disinfectant is ready for use Farmers can take up spraying using power spraying machine.
the spraying should be over before 48 hours of rearing. The frame of the rearing stands, rearing appliances and the floor should be thoroughly sprayed till soaked. The persons attending spraying must use the disinfectant mask. Clean the floor with 2.5% Sanitex solution at the rate of 2 liters per square meter. The Silkworm Egg Distribution Center Till recently, the farmers were supplied with eggs on sheets for chalky rearing. But thanks to the recently developed technology, nowadays loose eggs of high yielding CSR2 into CSR4 are becoming popular. This in fact has given an impetus to the commercial production. These loose eggs are stored under specific temperature. Fifteen gram of these loose eggs are preserved in the egg boxes. One box contains about 25,000 eggs equal to 50 DFLs. Fifteen gram loose eggs are uniformly spread on such incubation frames of 25 into 12 centimeter size. Then a tissue paper is covered over and the outer frame is fixed over it. The egg pouches and the frames are preserved in cold storages. Depending on the demand and need of the farmers, these eggs can be made into chalky from 10 to 365 days. Black boxing is done based on the head pigmentation of the eggs. 8 to 10 egg frames are put in such black bags and zipped. These are kept in an incubation chamber. A temperature of 25 degrees centigrade is maintained in the chamber. 48 hours are required to incubate these eggs. Now these eggs can be chalky rare. The black box bag is opened during the morning. The egg frames are kept in a tray and exposed to dim light. Now lift the tissue paper from the outer incubation frame which was exposed to the light. It can be seen that the eggs are hatched uniformly and simultaneously. Now as per the new recommendations, only one shade net instead of two nylon nets is covered like this and chopped tender leaves are thinly spread over it. Then a paraffin paper or a polythene sheet is covered over it and these trays are kept in the stand. After 2 to 3 hours, if the trays are taken out and checked, it can be found that all the worms have crawled out on the net to feed on the leaves. 
This helps in separating chalky worms from the egg shells. At this stage, chalky is done using the feather. Rearing of worms from this stage to second moult is called chalky rearing. In total, temperature of 26 to 28 degrees centigrade and humidity of 80 to 90 percent should be maintained for good chalky rearing. Dusting of bed disinfectant during chalky rearing. Chalky worms undergo molting on fourth day. At this stage, they stop feeding. Now, lime powder is dusted on these worms. Lime powder keeps the bed dry by absorbing moisture from the rearing bed and the environment. Vijeta disinfectant is dusted once all the worms come out of molting. This dusting can protect the tender skinned worms from infection. After half an hour, feed the worms. Changing the beds. To maintain the health of the growing worms, changing of the bed is a must. This type of nylon nets are spread over the worms and the feeding is given on it. After covering it with a polythene sheet, it is kept in the stand. By next morning, all the worms crawl up on the net. At this stage, the bed should be cleaned before feeding the worms. Cleaning the beds by adopting the new rolling method will not harm the worms. The pathogens and the poisonous gases released from the fecal matters and the leftover leaves may harm the worms. Therefore, these wastes over the paraffin paper are put to a litter cleaning basket. Again, the paraffin paper is spread in the tray and the rolled net is re-rolled over it. Thus, in the second stage, the bed should be cleaned compulsorily. To clean the bed other than the rolling system, the net is shifted to another tray with the help of two persons. However, this method requires more laborers and maintenance of hygiene is difficult. Now, these chalky worms which are in the second mould are spread uniformly on the disinfected stands. Lime powder is dusted on these worms. As mentioned earlier, after each mould, Vijeta should be dusted. If the battery operated duster developed by the institute is used, the powder can be dusted uniformly over the worms. After half an hour of dusting Vijeta, Shoot feeding should be given. 
leaf that is being fed should be green and nutritious. The temperature and humidity are recorded and care should be taken to maintain them. The temperature of 24 to 25 degrees centigrade and humidity of 70 to 75 percent should be maintained in the third and fourth stage. In the final stage, around 23 to 24 degrees centigrade temperature and 60 to 65 percent of humidity are maintained. To achieve this, this kind of gunny cloth is tied to the windows of the veranda of the rearing house. If the temperature is more and humidity is low, sprinkle water over them. When humidity is more, raise these gunny cloth curtains. In this way, environmental fluctuations are tackled. Such measures help in the healthy growth of the worms. Fifty-five to sixty-five days old mulberry shoots are fed to fifth stage worms. The worms that come out of fourth mould continuously feed on the leaves and then stop eating after attaining maturity. Sampurna spray is ideal for the uniform and simultaneous maturity of the worms. Come on, now let us learn about different mountages and their use. Traditional bamboo mountages Plastic mountages Japan type rotary cardboard mountages New mountages Mountages of two or three cardboards can be accommodated in the stand. Eight cardboard mountages fixed on the bamboo mats. Mountages are transported to mounting hall after thoroughly cleaning with a flame gun. If the mounting has to be done on a large scale, all the mounting appliances must be disinfected by a spray of Sanitec for effective disinfection. Methods of Spinning Self-Mounting Method Once the worms are uniformly mature after using Sampurna, lime is dusted in this manner. Then select new mountages of two or three cardboards. The matured worms crawl up to these blocks in the mountages within six to seven hours. However, this process may take some time. Jobrai method for collection of matured larvae. After selecting the shoots with the matured worms, shake the shoots gently to make the worms fall on the polythene sheets. Put these worms on the mountages. Picking up method of spinning larvae. Matured worms are picked up by hand and collected in the trays. It is a laborious and time-consuming process. Besides, it may cost more for the large-scale farmers. Lime should be dusted in thin layer over all these picked worms. This reduces the moisture content of the worms, besides avoiding contamination. After 5-6 to six days of the mounting, cocoons are spun stage by stage. During this period, care should be taken not to disturb the worms.
during spinning of cocoons care should be taken to maintain 23 to 24 degrees centigrade and 60 to 65 percent humidity and good aeration across the room. Harvesting of cocoons Before harvesting, sort out dead worms, inferior cocoons, stained cocoons. See that good cocoons are not stained. Dead worms and inferior cocoons are taken away and destroyed. Though cocoon formation is a much easier process in the plastic montages, the number of inferior cocoons will be more because of mass spinning. Besides, requirement of labor is more in case of plastic montages. However, because of the increased formation of double and inferior cocoons, the market demand will go down. In the new type of cardboard montages, good quality cocoons of uniform size can be produced as the urine is absorbed by the cardboard. And because of this, the cocoons are not soiled. In this method, there is no problem of double cocoon formation and hygienic condition is ensured. If the distance between the bed and the mountage is not proper, the cocoons are spoiled like this. This should be avoided. Deflossing and cleaning of cocoons For small farmers, this type of hand-driven deflossing machine is enough. But improved machines are necessary for deflossing at a bigger scale. These machines, driven both by hand or electricity, can effectively defloss the cocoons. This electrically operated machine is a boon to large scale rarers. Maximum number of cocoons can be deflossed in less time with this machine. In addition, the floss that has stuck to the rod can be cut easily using a blade. Sericulture industry plays an important role in providing employment to the rural populace and making them economically self-sufficient. Both men and women from all classes of society have been involved in sericulture, producing quality cocoons and earning more and more profits.